All right, welcome back to Noob School. This is where we find great sales and marketing talent and find out how they got started and uh, see what we can learn from them about their, their path, uh, their journey from where they started to where they are now. And today I've got a very good friend. I've known him almost since he got out of college named Greg Aiken. Welcome, Greg. Hey, thanks. Happy to be here. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think uh, I mean, you and I know each other pretty well, but I think you know my brother Dan better. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Dan and I, uh, I started at a company called Nuvox. Um, he just was this loud, boisterous guy <laughs> wow. walking around, yeah. uh, made everybody feel welcome. And yeah. uh, for somebody fresh out of school, I just went and knocked on his door and I was like, hey, I'm Greg Aiken and yeah. I feel like I should know you. So, yeah. Well, I remember it might be the first time I met you. You, you had won an award or he'd won an award. He won an award for being a mentor. That's right. And you were one of the people who spoke on his behalf. That's right. Yeah, I nominated him for Mentor of the Year yeah. with the local United Way here. And, um, uh, yeah, he just he did so much for me to help launch my career, taught me a lot about what um, it looks like to be a great mentor but also uh, a great manager. And so yeah. I've gotten to take a lot of that into my, my career. Yeah. And then you ran into him again. Later on at ScanSource, right? Did. Yeah. yeah, we worked at Nuvox, which became Windstream, and then uh, on to ScanSource. Um, just complete coincidence. That's cool. But, but you went to Clemson. I did. What did you major in? I majored in communications. Okay. Um, it's, it's interesting. I, I picked a major not knowing probably like a lot of noobs what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I knew that I liked to talk. And so I picked communications. Yeah. And um, after that, I just knew it was going to be sales or marketing, mm -hmm. and it just wound up being marketing. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, funny enough, I never took a marketing class. Mm -hmm. And so I've, I've been fortunate to be successful in my career without that. Yeah. So your career <clears throat> for the noobs out there, I would say it's mostly been marketing, marketing communication, and doing all kind of marketing things to support the Salespeople. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I, Nuvox was a very sales focused company and um, they, they had a lot of great leaders in place, many of them whom I still, still speak to today. Mm -hmm. um, but we, they impressed on me the, the fact that I needed to be um, listening to sales, talking to sales, figuring out what sales needs. Mm -hmm. And it helped me to be uh, with sales, you know, just I supported got Ted Hasseld in, yeah. in uh, the West region um, as in channel marketing. And I just I did a lot to, to sort of support sales. And I've been able to sort of take that with me mm -hmm. from there on. And you, you call yourself something now. I saw it on one of your emails, like the, the social media lead king or something like that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Something like that. I don't know about that. That's what got me wanting to call you. Okay. I, need, I need some help. <laughs> um, so, let's, you know, normally I ask people, how did you get started in sales? And, and that's not, you know, we all sell in our job. But what have you seen with new salespeople? Like, what have you seen with people who started and screwed up or people who started and did well? What kind of things could you pass along to our noobs? Yeah, I think um, just in terms of great salespeople, they're, they're, if you really sit back and, and think about how you would like to be sold to, mm -hmm. that's – that's something that I think is is important to consider. When people start throwing buzzwords at me, I, you know, right now there's a lot of people talking about trusted advisor mm -hmm. as a phrase people use. People use the word solutions, particularly in the tech space. Um, if you can break away from that, mm -hmm. you're going to differentiate yourself. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that's what it's about. Um, there's a marketing tactic that that probably most are familiar with that's direct mail mm -hmm. um, and just people that are literally sending mail. Well, people don't do that anymore. And so, <laughs> you know, when they tell you in the stock market, buy low and sell high, I mm -hmm. think about the logic behind that. Well, direct mail is something that has what, what I'd say in marketing is a hundred percent open rate. Mm -hmm what if you hand wrote a note to some of your top prospects? No one else is doing that mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And so I think when I look at successful sales reps, um, whether they're noobs or experienced, it's people who look at the resources around them, use those resources and find great ways to differentiate themselves. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> Anything in particular you saw that, that noobs did that weren't successful? Yeah. Um, I think just from a messaging standpoint, um, when stream, uh, bought a company that, uh, was called Paytech out of the Northeast. Um, they had a really excellent training program for new salespeople. And I think, you know, when I think back on one of the exercises that they did, they would pull a bunch of sales reps up to the front of the room. They would say, all right, these guys are going to come back in here. We're going to simulate um, uh, something where they come in and tell you uh, why we should hire them. You're fresh out of the hiring process. You've mm -hmm. just gotten this job. Please leave the room. We're going to send a sales trainer out there too. And one by one, you're going to come in and give your pitch. Mm -hmm. And as they left, the door would shut, and then the rest of the sales trainers would go, here's what they're going to do. They're, mm. Every one of them is going to come in and say these words. They had a flip chart, and they flipped it around, and it was the same thing. It was, um, you know, I'm a people person. <laughs> I'm a hard worker. Uh, something about experience, mm -hmm. and, and so on and so on. And it, sure enough, they came in one by one, and – you hear the same thing over and over. Well, you should hire me because I'm a people person, mm -hmm. because I'm a hard worker and I'm organized. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how that works. And of course, at the end, you got the ringer that comes in, the sales trainer, whose exercise it was, which was a fair competition. But they came in at the end and they said, uh, you know, I've got this process. It's a 12 step process. In the morning I wake up, I make a list of what I'm going to do that day. And so on and so I go through the whole day. By the end of the day, I'm, I'm reaching out to um, um, my top prospects and then I'm, I'm closing out the day with putting orders in, you know, mm -hmm. the orders that came in that day. And at the end, they turn around and ask the class, who are you going to hire? And everybody obviously picks the one, you know, how the exercise yeah. goes from there. And, you know, I, I've, I've taken that into marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's, you know, that's an example that, that I think about all the time is from a marketing standpoint, when we have an about us page, if we just remove our name from the, the company name from the description, can you tell who the company is? Mm -hmm. Can you line yourself up next to all your competitors and see who is who? Odds are you can't. Yeah. And I think when we think about mistakes that noobs make, it's just going with the herd, mm -hmm. figuring out. Um, how to talk about the company as everyone else does. Right. Um, I think that's that's a mistake, and it's it's also an area of great opportunity. Interesting. Okay, that's interesting. <clears throat> I hear what you're saying. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of a um, little bit of challenger sale potential there. You know, where the person should challenge the question a little bit before they just start spouting off what they're good at. And one of the things we talk about in Noob School, which I'm <clears throat> sure you've read, is <clears throat> you really want to, as soon as possible, flip it back to the prospect. What is it they want? What are they looking for? Not what am I? Mm -hmm. What are they looking for? What, what problem are they trying to solve? Mm -hmm. If you can, if, they, if they will just level with you on what they need, then maybe I can help you, maybe I can't. Right. But whether or not I'm a go-getter might not be relevant. Right. You know? Right. So, I mean, that's, that's a great story. I can't believe that's uh, kind of tricky for those those young salespeople. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> going into your, your business life, what's something that you thought about sales that turned out to be different? Hmm. Uh, I would say... I think that sales and marketing, so me representing marketing, um, I th what I've seen is that marketing a lot of times has different goals than sales. Yeah. I think coming into it, I assumed everyone was doing the same thing. And in recent years with marketing and in terms of lead generation, we have been, as marketers, have been bucketing people into categories like marketing qualified leads, MQLs, uh, sales qualified leads, which are SQLs, and then opportunity buckets. Um, I've seen, interestingly enough, I've seen that we have, as a marketing unit, have hit our goals while sales doesn't. And it just, that feels lopsided. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I was having a conversation with a, a great friend of mine, Clay Tooten, the other day, and just thinking through like what would it look like if that construct was blown up? You know, there there was this period of time where people were doing research online and entering their information to download valuable content. Well, now a lot of that content is available in a lot of places mm -hmm. and, and it might not be worth trading your information for. And so, you know, I think being able to think about it from the standpoint of like the company I'm with right now, air compressor services is the best hands down company that I've worked for. Um, we, my chief operating officer and I, a guy from Vonage, um, put together our, my goals for the year and the very top goal is the sales goal. It's what the sales revenue number is. Mm -hmm. That is my goal. There you go. And so I think, you know, coming in just in my 16 years as a yeah. marketer, that has been something that has always is been that the first separate. time that's happened. You know, there might've been some times in some early years, but it, but I think we've come back around to this. Yeah. I think there was a period of time where, where people started to stretch and view marketing as the people who bring in net new leads. And so therefore marketing has its own goals, yeah. but that's, that couldn't be further from the truth and what I'm doing. Yes, we bring in net new leads, but we're also helping the existing accounts grow. And, yeah. um, and ultimately we're helping the sales team grow. And, yeah. and I think just the conversation that I have with, with my friend was like, what's the first thing you would do if that goal is adjusted where you're now, your number is now the sales number. I'm going to pick up the phone and call a sales guy and go, what do you need? Yeah, what do you need? How are we going to make the number? Right. How can I help you make the number? I'm telling you, man, that is so important for the noobs and all the business owners that are watching this to understand is it's an age old problem. Okay. The salespeople want more leads and the marketing people are like, we gave you the leads. You didn't call the leads, right? Or you they're like, well, we tried to call them. They weren't good leads. This thing goes back and forth because they're motivated to get a certain number of leads. Sales want to, but it sell. And I've, I've read about this uh, in the last six months. It's becoming more popular to tell the VP of marketing that your number is the same as the sales guy. We don't care if you get one lead or a million leads. you got to make the number. Right. That's pretty strong. Yeah, because if you're going to grow, you need to grow as a company. And and it's upside down if, if there's a, a bonus comp for marketing tied to hitting something when the sales team isn't yeah. hitting their number. So It's ridiculous. Well, you ever you ever listen to Zig Ziglar? Yeah, it's it. I remember seeing some Zig Ziglar quotes, but he's a little he's a little before my time. Well, you ought to you still you know find yourself a cassette player to uh, listen yeah. to it. But anyway, <laughs> it's, most of it's actually on YouTube now. But there's a great story about the kid in the uh, a sales story about the kid in the schoolyard, and the bully's picking on him every day. He's picking on him, picking on him. You know. So one day the the, the little kid walks up to him and he draws a line in the sand. <clears throat> and he, he says, I dare you to step over that line. And the bully steps over the line and he says, now what are you going to do? And the little kid says, now we're on the same side. <laughs> you know, you just think about that. It's just get, get on the same side as somebody. Yeah. And now you're fighting together instead of with each other. Yeah, so. it's true. Oh, I'm fired up about that. That is great. I'm so glad that company, I could tell. So I called you. Yeah you know, a week or two ago, trying to get you to run you down for this. And I didn't have your cell number. So I called your main number uh -huh. and some guy, I don't know who it was, just answered the phone and he could not have been nicer. Yep. Didn't, didn't know me from Adam, could not have been nicer, treated me with respect, said he would run you down and find you. I said, I was just an old friend trying to find you. And within five minutes, you know, I, I got a call from you. Oh, yeah. You were at lunch or something. Who was that? Uh, that was Jason. He's He is in our customer service department, so yeah. he is used to uh, to being the nice guy on the phone. Yeah. Um, but you could tell something about a company, Yeah, you know, randomly very often that there's something very good there. It Like, I know, I'm a marketing guy, so you can take this with a grain of salt, but I hope that, that um, you know, how I feel about air compressor services comes out in this statement, which is, you know, it's a group of people that I genuinely feel are some of the best at what they do. We've got um, sales folks. We've got people that were noobs once and, and might still be noobs um, in that group. Uh, we've got me. I'm, they brought me in to do marketing. I'm the only marketing person right now. Um, and it's just 
it's amazing how cohesive this group is. The, the founder has done an excellent job at pulling in some of the best, vetting them, and and making sure that everyone um, is going to be able to work well together. And unlike a lot of places that I've worked where, where in the boilerplate of the press release it says, you know, such and such, the leading provider of whatever, Air Compressor Services, ACS, we are the lead. We're the actual leader. And we're some of we're the company that does this the best not only in the country but in the world so if you consider that we're the actual leader that everyone who's working for us is is some of the best at what they do mm-hmm. I, I brag on our um our sales folks because i say these guys read parts manuals in their spare time <laughs> and and that's what we're doing we're selling um uh air compressor parts that are replacement parts. So you sell the parts. That's right. And we also do services. So our the lead service tech um, has forgotten more than most people will ever know in their lifetime about air compressors. And, and where, where is the warehouse for um, parts? It's, it's off in West, toward West Greenville. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, here in South Carolina. Have efficiently? Uh, it, absolutely. We, we, I mean, the, the, everybody, the warehouse team, um, it's been really impressive just to see everyone really take ownership. I mean, I know there was a period of time where that group was working from home, uh, and it's pretty wild how everyone wanted to come back. And mm. people work extra hours there. I mean, it's it's no joke. Um, everyone wants to see this company grow, and I've never been a part of anything like it. That's cool. Because yeah. you've been with some great companies. I have. Yeah, I have. And I've learned a lot of great things, but I, I just feel like – this I've been telling people I told you on the phone. It feels like corporate. Re, I'm calling it corporate rehab. <laughs> um, it just it feels like um, you know I'm taking I'm able to take what I have learned but apply it to something that essentially just feels like summer camp every day. Wow. I feel like I shouldn't be getting paid to do this, and and yet I am, and and we're growing like crazy. So it's it's been a lot of fun. Well, that's great. So what um, <clears throat> what's your best advice for a noob? Um, you drop the mic have, moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have a couple. Um, I think the first you talked about me and your brother. Um, attach yourself to mentors, um, and and not just one. You don't have to have one, just mm-hmm. one. You can have a round table of mentors. Um, find people that that are a little further down the road than you that whose career that you want to be like, and and go get in front of them and see how they're doing it, and mm-hmm. take them to lunch and. Just see where it goes. Yeah. Um, and I think the other thing, I, I experienced some some layoffs um, that were happening around me early in my career. And I, I had a great conversation with my dad um, who had worked for a company called J.E. Serene. Um, just a, a, a great company here in Greenville, but they were at some point, they had had a series of layoffs every so often. And and he just said, like, you got to make yourself valuable. And, <laughs> and ways that you do that are, um, you know, last week, I'll give you an example in my personal life. Last week, uh, my boss goes on uh, vacation, hits me up while he's there and is like, hey, can you go um, get the checks out of the mailbox, get the invoices out of the mailbox, scan them to these folders, and, and this is what I need you to do with it. I think always being willing to take on something mm-hmm, else mm-hmm. my in my dad's example he he would work the mail room you know he would go ask somebody like hey you're going out on maternity leave what are you doing to try and extend himself beyond his typical job so that if a layoff scenario does happen and they're looking at two of you the guy who does the mail room and help fills in for people when they're gone and the person who's just doing this job yeah. who, who are they gonna cut yeah. and so i think Make yourself mm-hmm. valuable. Find ways that you can extend yourself in the organization. Yep. Just always want to, you know, give me more, give me more. Yep. I think that's that's the key. I love it. And I've, I've heard it put another way. I think it's very powerful. It probably, for noobs, it probably applies more to people as they get into management positions and things like that. But, you know, whoever your boss is, find out what's driving them nuts. And let's take an easy example. Let's say expense reports, Okay or travel arrangement, whatever it is. If it's say, hey boss, I know this is driving you nuts and you're busy with, with the, the, the easily deal, I'll handle it for you. Mm-hmm. Really? You just kind of like, I got it. 
It's gonna be like imagine taking away Brother Dan's expense reports. Right. He'd be so happy. Oh yeah. He'd be the best guy in the world. That's right. So find out what you know your your upper level people, your managers, the people that can move you up. Find out what's driving them nuts and just handle it for them. That's right. And then when it's time for promotions, who are they going to be looking at? And the opposite thing would be to say what? To do nothing. Just no. To say something like, "Uh, that's not my job." Oh, that's not my job. That's the worst. <laughs> that's the worst phrase you can use. That's right. It's not your job. Neither is this one, pal. Yeah. <laughs> Neither is this one. Um, and so, what is your favorite word? Uh. My my wife and my favorite word is kindness. That's, kindness wow. that that runs in the Aiken family. It's kind. Being kind is not being nice. Uh -huh. There's a there's a difference there, and I think you know as as I remember back to some of the great mentors that I've had in my life, it, there were, I think the the key difference between excellent management and mentors and someone who who's maybe not is. Um, there's a difference. It's it's someone who is um, looking out for your best interests mm -hmm. as their employee mm -hmm. or their mentee versus their own best interests. Mm -hmm. And that sounds easy, but put it in practice, it, it's, it can be tricky. And, and more often than not, uh, it's hard to find someone who's really looking out for you. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I strive to be kind, um, but that also means being corrective if necessary and, and pointing people down the right path. Um, my wife, Caroline, I have a, a, a saying, it's it's in our uh, kitchen. It says, always be a little more kind than is necessary. And so I think that goes with what I was saying too, and being able to extend yourself, mm -hmm. just what we were talking about, yeah. you know, push yourself to help others yeah. and it'll come back to you. It's yeah. infused with love and it's a great word. Love it. I love kindness, and I love the fact that you followed it up by saying, you know, you're kind, but you still get it done. Right. You know, uh, that's wonderful. And then lastly, we've done a little bit of this, but if you want to promote a little bit more about what you're doing with ACS, kind of what's going on, how could people buy, who would who, who would want to buy from them? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, for one thing, we're hiring. Um, okay. We're, we're hiring great, um, motivated salespeople, I, I think. Right now, it's it is um, it's really easy to outwork people, and and what I mean by that is, it seems like the world is trying with this work from home mm -hmm. movement, mm -hmm. um, which don't get me wrong, it's great in a lot of cases. I think hi a hybrid model is wonderful, but um, working from from home, and all these people are essentially, in my opinion, saying we don't want to work. <laughs> and and I, I know that can be we controversial, do want to get paid. right? We want to get paid. We just want to do minimal hours. Yeah. And I, again, there is a time and place. And, you know, I think one day I could see a hybrid model for myself um, working out. But, um, you know, I, I think there's a really a real opportunity to outwork everyone right now because there's so many people trying to do less. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I think you know, if you're wired like that, if you just don't mind putting in the hours, we want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And so I, th I think that's really the, the biggest thing. Um, you know, air compressor parts and services are, are highly needed, especially in the air and the manufacturing realm. Um, it, the, the, our, what we are selling is powering the manufacturing of a whole lot of things. Okay. And so, um, we are trying to help organizations um, get better and and uh, stay leaner with with a lot of our replacement parts. Okay. So, so we'll put your uh, your contact information up on the the podcast. Yeah, that'd be great. They can hit you up if they want to throw in a resume. Sure, sounds great. Greg, thank you for being here. Yeah, fantastic story. Absolutely, we thank appreciate you. Thanks you. for having me. Thank you. Yeah. Okay.